Nakia Jones. Um, my son came home from work today and he showed me a disturbing um, video about a young man that was uh, shot and killed by police in uh, Louisiana. And it's so funny because my son wanted to go to college there. And I kept saying, I ain't feeling that or whatever. Um, what's interesting is to me is that the shooting involved a police officer. And I watched the video over and over and over and over and over again so that I wouldn't become judgmental because not only am I a mother of two African-American sons and I have African-American nephews and I have brothers, I'm also a person that wears the uniform with the blue. I'm also the one that gives their lives and puts their lives in danger. I wear blue. So I'm looking at it, I'm looking at it, and I became so furious and so hurt because it bothers me when I hear people say, y'all police officers this, y'all police officers that, and they put us in this negative category when I'm saying to myself, I'm not that type of police officer. I know officers that are like me that will give their life for other people. So I'm looking at it, and it tore me up because I got to see what you all see. If I wasn't a police officer and I wasn't on the inside, I would be saying, look at this racist stuff. Look at this. And it hurt me. First of all, I became an officer in 1996. I grew up in the hood. So I ain't grew up in the suburbs. I grew up on 9th and in Kansas. We moved to East Cleveland. So I know what it is. So the reason why I became a police officer was to make a difference in people's lives. I knew what it was like to have a parent on drugs. I knew what it was like to watch people be picked on and bullied on and all kinds of things. I said, I want to make a difference. I want to be that change. So I became that change. So in 96, I took an oath in East Cleveland, sitting in front of Chief Guy and said, I will serve and protect my community by all costs. Even if it meant I wouldn't go home to my one-year-old daughter. And that's what I did. And I did it with integrity and respect. No. The thing that hurt me most of all was that a lot of people that I was arresting were the same color as me that grew up in East Cleveland like me so I couldn't understand that why would you want to destroy your community I couldn't understand I said okay but they're not sworn to serve and protect either they're not they didn't take that oath this is what they do so then I left there and I came to another predominantly black community and became a police officer I'm the first and only African-American female officer and I can say pride and respect I sat in front of Marcia Fudge and took that oath that I would serve and protect my community. And I also moved into my community and I raised my children in this community. I wore that blue uniform proudly. And I know for a fact I have five, six beautiful children that love me. And I have a husband. I have a family that loves me. And I know there's times I may not come home from work. I have taken guns off 15, 14, 13 year old children. I'm talking about real guns. I've had to go and tell a mother that their 13-year-old son or daughter was not coming home. I've interviewed rape victims that's been raped by people that look just like me, the same color as me. We are running around killing each other left and right. But what hurts me the most is the people that stood in front of a judge and stood in front of a mayor and said, I swear my oath that I will serve and protect this community. And God, please forgive me, and you can delete me if you're getting mad at me. If you are white, and you working in a black community, and you are racist, you need to be ashamed of yourself. You stood up there and took an oath. If this is not where you want to work at, then you need to take your behind somewhere else. I decided to work in an African-American community because I'm African-American and I wanted to make a difference. I could have worked in Parma. I could have worked in Lakewood. I could have worked in North Homestead. I'm a double minority. They would have got two hits for me because I'm African-American and I'm a female. I'm here because I wanted to make a difference. But how dare you stand next to me in the same uniform and murder somebody? How dare you? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. So why don't we just keep it real? If you're that officer, then no good and well you got a God complex. You're afraid of people that don't look like you. You have no business in that uniform. Take it off. If you're afraid to go and talk to an African-American female or a male or a Mexican male or female, then because they're not white like you, take the uniform off. You have no business being a police officer. 
Because there's many of us that would give our life for anybody. And we took this oath and we missed it. If you are that officer that's precious, take the uniform off and put the KKK hoodie on. Because I will not stand for that. If you're an officer that works with me and you're wrong, I will tell you you're wrong. My heart goes out to that young man's family because if it was my son, I don't know what I would do. But to my brothers and sisters, my juvenile brothers and sisters, I am your keeper. Put them guns down, y'all. We killing each other. And the reason why all this racist stuff keeps going on is because we're divided. We're killing each other. We're not standing together. See, Martin Luther King them stood together. You didn't hear a bunch about, about a bunch of black people killing each other. We got to stand together because a house divided against each other will not stand. And we got to be smart. Don't mean go tearing up stuff. Be smart. I am my brother and my sister's keeper. That's why I'm going to keep this uniform on. Because today I wanted to quit when I saw that video. But I need for y'all to support the ones of us that are right. And I need for you to stand for those of us that are, that are not right. I also need for y'all to become role models for our juveniles, y'all. They're killing each other left and right. I'm telling you. And people that don't really want us to exist are sitting back laughing because they're saying, look at them destroy each other. Yeah, we'll have a police shooting here or there, but we're not going to talk about the millions of black, black, and black men that are killing each other left and right. Put the guns down. The most powerful, fearful person, person in the world is an intelligent black man. Men, I need for y'all to stand up. Get these young men, mentor them, teach them. And then when you see that one of us are doing something wrong, and I'm not telling you, you know when you're wrong, and you know when you're dealing with the police, and we got to do our job, because we have to do our job. But when we do something that you know is wrong, you need to speak up. You need to go speak to a chief. You need to go sit down and talk to mayor. I'm not talking about just because I don't want you to tell me what to do. I'm talking about something serious, y'all. Again, this is my thoughts. If you get upset, delete me. This is my Facebook page. God bless.